I am Mani Gandhan. I am working as an assistant professor from NIT. Myself, Nestor Johnson Phillip, working as an assistant professor in electronics and communication engineering. The brand created in 2008 with the effect of one and only person. He created infra, facility, educate people in his organization. He worked hard day and night, make his dream come true. His visionary works not only serves in the education sector, but also in health sector. His name is Dr. Balbir Singh Tomar. He is a chancellor, NIMS University, and he is a doctor and businessman. He done the MBBS MD in Pediatrics from King's College London. So, the brand is NIMS Institute of Medical Sciences since 2008. Climbing a mountain is a feat of human accomplishment but only achievement can be given if we have a direct knowledgeable guide just like those climbers who need a team and as well a experienced guy we also have our experienced guy who is none other than Sundeep Mishra vice Ch uh, chancellor of Nimes University also the former professor of cardiology in Ames An Olympic gymnastic team needs a tough coach so, so that they will lead to the gold. The tough coach here, we are having Dr. Pankaj Gupta, Chairman AAC, NIMS University. So, he worked as a Dean, Professor, Executive Director, Chief Advisor, Vice Chancellor of various universities. So, so, we are not having uh, in this meeting. So. As we know, the planets are so greenery, and if there is greenery, it gives life. For our names, the person who gives greenery is none other than Dr. Chaman Ram Verma, who is the Dean Faculty of Medical Science of, uh, Medical Science of Nimes University. The planet have a social friendly with other people coming from other galaxy. So the one and only person who makes the NIMS more active, Mr. Ashish Mathur, head TPO, NIMS University. So, Mani, what's special today? So we have uh, one more uh, footprint to be there in uh, South Pole of our NIMS. Footprint on the south pole of Neil. What do you mean by that? Actually, south pole of Nims have a lot of minerals and it have gems and well as diamonds. So the people are marching toward the south pole of Nims. Okay, so where is the south pole of Nims? Are yeah, it's NIT. What is the footprint that we have already have? We have footprints of uh, dignitaries like we have uh, we already have a footprint of Sri Sundarmurti sir. So he is a mission director who worked as a PSLV missions from ISRO, and uh, we have a footprint of R R Ilangon sir, scientist ISRO who worked with the former president APJ Abdul Kalam. So we have lot and more. Who is the new person standing at the gates of South Pole of Nimes University? When a boat has no rudder. It does not matter how you had pedal, you will never go to the particular destination. We are excited to have you steering and in the right direction, we are sure that Sri K.N. Subramaniam sir to steer our student in the right direction by his speech. So we are happy to say that you have joined our hands in the beautiful occasion. Thank you, sir. So let me introduce about our guest, Mr. K. N. Subramaniam, Chairman of the Board and Independent Director of Federal Morgan Gates India Private, and the former President, CEO, and the Managing Director of Gabriel India Limited, which is nothing but one of the companies of Anand Group of Companies. And about his education, he has completed his B.Tech Chemical Engineering from University of Madras in 1975 and completed his MBA degree from IIM in 1977. After that, 
he started his career from management training and later on then he joined the group anand groups of company and federal morgan gates india private limited let's have a short uh, virtual about the company that he has worked with Anand Group. As India's leading auto component manufacturer, we power just about every type of motor vehicle, cars, commercial vehicles, off-highway vehicles, two-wheelers, and even trains that run in India. There is an ever-growing demand for stringent quality norms from our key customers. The customer expectation along with strong competitive environment has brought in the need to attain and sustain world class quality levels mr deep si anand the founder of anand firmly believed in the ethos that in order to be the best you have to work with the best the group's journey of partnerships began with gabriel in 1961 over the past 6 decades anand companies have successfully integrated the technical expertise of its joint venture partners into local operations creating win-wins for both our customers and our companies. Today, the Anand name is synonymous with trust, innovation and quality. With its wide range of solutions for the Indian automotive market, Anand companies provide a range of brands and products that are simply world class. a pan india presence representing the best brands from the automotive world anand is the definitive market leader the partnership model lies at the very heart of anand's success its leadership its growth not only do the partnerships span cultures across the us europe and asia but our partnerships have flourished and stood the test of time our customers operate in the most demanding and competitive conditions and we collaborate with them closely to provide the best solutions to their challenges we are very proud to be recognized every year by our customers we at anand are committed towards ensuring that we are first time right every time right with zero accidents zero defects zero waste and zero broken commitment Business is 90% people. This is our guiding principle towards our employees since inception. Anand is known in the industry as an HR innovator and has been at the forefront of HR practices for decades. A testament to this commitment is many Anand Group companies featuring consistently as great places to work in India. Collaborating with its partners, associates and corporates with shared dreams and values SNSF has since its inception touched the lives of millions of underprivileged men, women and children in the areas of education, skill development, health and hygiene and community conservation. Anand is defined by a value system also called the Anand way. These core values govern our decision making in every sphere of our work and social responsibilities and they continue to define the way Anand does business. We drive Anand as a unified corporate entity. We aspire to be a world-class organization. We encourage organizational transparency. We value integrity. We encourage innovation. We nurture talent. We support continuous education. We build trust and empower people. We practice open and honest communication. We recognize and reward achievements. 
We are an equal opportunity employer. We are committed to social responsibility. So mogul also. So we have the video of the federal mogul. I'm just playing the video. So before that, this federal mogul it's a mechanical based company. So they are just fabricating uh, a piston as well as cylinder. Okay. So I'm just playing the video of the production process. Okay. So that you will understand uh, the value of the particular speaker. I would request our honorable guest to come to the dais and de deliver the lecture. Give your applause. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and the young students of NIMS. It's a privilege and honor for me to be here amongst all of you. Thank you very much for your invitation to share my thoughts on business management and value of that in real world. In fact, uh, I was very impressed the way in which the campus has come up and I had an opportunity to meet with the chancellor as well as the vice chancellor and their vision they were sharing with me. And you're all fortunate to be part of the institution. You are going to be future leaders tomorrow who will carry the message of the university and also make a name for the university. The topic given to me is very, very vast. You must have read thousands and millions of books on the subject of management education. If there is no dearth, you go to any bookshop, any place, it's an area which is filled with books, whether it is time management, whether it is uh, leadership, whether it is on your uh, vision, mission and practices and also how to be having goal clarity and move forward. There is thousands of books. There is no dearth. And if you go to internet and search, uh, you will find many, many options, many, many authors talking to you and just one, authors talking to you on various subjects, okay? And uh, what I was thinking was, given the time, I will ask you also to let me know what is that you are also expecting and uh, I will appreciate your being candid and telling me what do you like me to talk? Okay, if you've got any specific areas which you would like me to share my journey and experience in life, I will be more than happy to do it. Any, anybody wants to ask anything?
Okay, then whatever I have thought through, I will go through that and I will share my ideas with you. The uh, world has become a commercial entity. You go everywhere, people are talking about money and profit and how much benefit I will get, what is the value which I will get. So over a period of time, the whole world has moved away from almost non-business organization to business organization. So called NGOs are there, which are not profit oriented, which are not money oriented compared to that, this has changed. This has also had an impact on almost the life of everybody and every type of uh, business, every type, walk of life. I will start sharing with you some ideas what I thought is relevant to all of us in life because uh, as the title says, value in real world, there's plenty. First and foremost, I would like to tell you is good communication abilities. I would request each one of you to practice on your own, at home, listen to good leaders speaking, whether it is Mahendra Singh Dhoni talking about it or Prime Minister Narendra Modi talking about it or any other person, keep listening to them. And whenever you get time, every day spend some time how people communicate. What is that makes it very effective? You must have heard about monkey bath, which is running for the last eight years. How it has become something people look for. So my first request to all of you is try to learn to communicate effectively. Ultimately, you may have brilliant ideas, brilliant mind, but unless and otherwise you share your ideas and values and what you have in mind and communicate to people, there is no benefit neither you will derive or from your knowledge others will derive. So first and foremost, communicate, communicate, communicate. That's the most important thing. And for communicating, you must know what you want to communicate, to whom you are communicating, how you would like to communicate. So modulation, voice modulation, delivery, so many things are important. So you must have all heard about Kohn Banega Kurapati KBC. You see how effective Mr. Amitabh Bachchan in the last 15 years plus. Every season, it's always a pleasure to watch him. I think uh, each one of you must also be doing it. So uh, how he's able to make that one of the versatile programs in the country. So my humble request to all of you is practice. You may not be brilliant communicator today, but later on you will become. You look at all the cricket captains in IPL. Some of them do not know how to speak English. Some of them do not know what to tell. But over a period of time, by sheerly watching and observing, whether it is Hardik Pandya talking about it, or KL Rahul speaking about it, or a very versatile Saurav Ganguly talking about it, over a period of time, everybody has developed that skill. So please do develop that skill of communication. And I'm saying communication, it's not only verbal communication, it's also a written communication. You have to be precise, you have to be simple in language so that other persons understand and make it a point that uh, what you want to say is received well by the other person. So both written and verbal communication is very, very vital for success. Please practice it in your own way. Second thing which I would like to share with you is on time management. India is not very well known for time discipline. You must have heard about it from others. You must have also seen it being practiced. You want to go somewhere on time, you are not able to reach. So, and you are late because of which something else is late. The success of Japan after the Second World War, when the country was ravaged and also brought to almost ground, 
Today, when you look at it, it's one of the versatile economies in the world. The success of Japan is time management. We all have a view wherein we would like to say that, yes, we are accustomed to saying that. But practicing very effectively, how much time and activity will take is very, very vital. And I will request and urge with all of you, practice it, time management. When you are starting, when you are finishing. Second is also how much time is required to plan an activity. Many times we don't do that. We say that from here to Delhi, there are many roads are there, we will take it. Google Maps have made your life very simple. Every one of us use it. Prior to that, we were not using that. So I would like to urge upon all of you, see to that you practice good time management. Time management means effectiveness in terms of ensuring that you are able to deliver your goal within the time. And uh, I remember uh, about 20 years back, I was uh, dealing with a person, Richard Cropper. He's no more. He's an Irish man, but settled in Australia. He told me he was to go for a deal uh, with an oil company in Singapore at 9 o'clock. Normally, he goes on time, etc. But on that day, he ended up going five minutes late. And you know what is the result? He lost the deal from an oil company. He said, from that day, I have realized that never, ever be late. Never, ever be late. When somebody has called you and you have accepted it, be on time. And why in, in India, everybody is normally running behind time, mainly because our planning is somewhat poor. Suppose I have to be there somewhere at 9 o'clock. I have to target to be there by 8.45, and then go and relax outside the room where you're going to have a meeting of some people. And then there will be pressure on the person whom you are meeting. Oh, so so-and-so so has come, so we must start. If you yourself are late, there is no motivation for the other person to look forward to meeting you. So my humble request to all of you, point number two is on time. Time is everything. You would have seen what uh, happens when you are late, whether it is watching the sports matches. I would like you to take your time to uh, uh, watch again some of the highly successful matches, whether it is in Wimbledon, Australian Open, or French Open, tennis, or otherwise badminton, or otherwise cricket, how time is an important element. Unless and otherwise they are in a position to tackle it on time, they cannot succeed. I think there was one movie where uh, Amir Khan uh, uh, tells, two minute baki hai, I think uh, I am not able to get the movie which is where uh, his daughter uh, goes for a uh, wrestling match and then sirf two minute hai, but he says, two minute me ek so bhi second hai. I, I think uh, I am not able to recollect the movie. So, uh, okay. So, that means no, it looks two minutes is a very small time, but 120 seconds looks very big. So, it's a question of how do you measure time? So, my uh, request to all of you is every day plan your time very well. Suppose you want to watch. Television for one hour, what time to what time we will watch. You want to study in isolation, what time to what time. So never ever miss the opportunity to discipline yourself on time. In fact, uh, there is a famous saying that uh, the Britishers have taught Indians everything. You know, they have ruled this country for more than 200 years. They have taught us good administration, good judicial system, good uh, 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 practices. Good English, our people can speak, good cricket playing ability. But one thing they did not teach us, because they were always afraid, these Indians will outsmart everybody else. How to look at a watch? 
Okay, you go to UK, you go to Japan, you go to Germany, they are all highly time conscious. Many times people cut short their meetings, 9 to 9.30 means after 9.30, out. The other person cannot continue to talk. We are accustomed to be uh, talking for long and that's the one reason why we have not been able to be world beaters. Now, our younger team and generations which are coming up, they are all highly time conscious. You see how much they practice for winning an Olympic gold medal, how much they practice for other things. So, I would like you to urge upon all of you to focus on time management. And uh, that will take you to places in the world, not here in India. Any part of the world, you will succeed in a great measure. Third, I also want to uh, share with you is, you need management in every walk of life, whether your personal life, business life, or you're running a NGO, or you're going for some uh, a prayer or anything. Ultimately, you need to have a, a clarity as, as to what you want to do. I remember uh, in Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, we were all taught one course called Written Analysis and Communication. It used to be called VAC. <laughs> That's a short form. What it used to teach us is you must be able to define a problem. And what is the objective you have got? Suppose I want to buy a house in Jaipur. That's a problem. So what is my objective? I must... Uh, how to resolve it in terms of money I have got in hand, how fast I want to get it, how much size of the apartment I am looking for. So many things you must clear, clarify an objective. And then you look at options, whether to take it very near Nims University or near Jaipur or near Gurgaon. So these are the options. Finally, you evaluate and come to a conclusion, this is what I want to do. So this happens in our mind for every activity, whether it is day-to-day uh, -day activities or slightly one-year planning or five-year planning activities, it has to be done. As management school students and engineering students, many of you who are sitting here, practice this. You must be able to define a problem, look at objectives, and what are the various options available? What is the criterion? and find a solution. For example, you want to do uh, engineering. Where to do engineering? X, Y, Z. Then what speciality you would like to do? And which university offers this speciality much better than the other? Then how much, what is the criterion for evaluation? How much of money is involved? When I will get the admission? Suppose I want to go to Harvard University today. Even if I plan today, I cannot go before 2024 because I have to write an entrance exam, GMAT or whatever it is, and then I must qualify myself in the top ranking, then I must apply for various universities and get it. So do have a clarity of thought as to what you want to do, whether in your personal life, career, suppose you're joining a, a business organization, what you want to do, please be clear. And once you have this, and I can assure you, you will progress in a great deal, better measure, and bigger way. Okay. And I also want to uh, uh, share with you on when I am talking about management and uh, whether it is personal life or uh, different situations. Leadership has become most vital. And today, there is a vacuum of leadership in all walks of life. Why I am emphasizing on leadership is that's all that makes the difference. It doesn't matter where from you are coming from, which part of the country, which part of the colleges you are coming from. You don't need to be from the top institutes or top engineering colleges to become the best. You know, uh, Mr. Satya Nadella, who is the chairman of Microsoft, he passed out from Manipal Engineering College. During my college days, Manipal Engineering College was known as for captive, uh, capita uh, capitation fees. You pay some money, you get engineering college admission, medical college admission. But coming from there, he went on to become the chairman by 2013. In a span of about 50, 20 years, he has made it to the chairman's position. 
What is the reason is, it doesn't matter where you are coming from, whether smaller town, bigger town, whether you know good English or you don't know good English, whether you, but if your clarity of thought is there, what you want to do, you can achieve greater heights. Similarly, look at Sundar Pichai, who is the chairman of Google. Of course, he came from IIT, but he came from metallurgical engineering, of all the things. He's not an IT specialist. He did his master's also in some other area, not in uh, IT. But out of sheer liking and vision, he has, and passion, he has moved on to become the chairman. So many such success stories are there, which you look at it. So I would like to urge upon all of you as to have clarity and also what you want to do, where you want to do, and also aim for leadership, whatever you are doing. Whether you are doing mass communication, whether you are doing marketing, whether organizational behavior, try to become the best. Only then you will become a world-class person and people will look for you in that area. I also want to share with you, when I am talking about leadership, one of the important aspects of leadership is you must have a vision and also you must have a passion for what you are doing. First is passion. Whatever you do, whether you are running a restaurant, whether you are running a small uh, uh, fancy uh, shop for various gift items, or otherwise you are running a, uh, any other small business, I don't uh, want to uh, get into which type of things, but you must have the passion for excellence. And people who have succeeded in great measure are those who have a great deal of passion. It is not just uh, like that people succeed. You read the lives of, whether it's Mr. Narayan Murthy himself, whether Mr. Chandrasekhar, who is the now Tata uh, uh, Sons chairman, or otherwise even Sunil Bharti Mittal, who is from Bharti Yattal. All of them had a great deal of passion in what they are doing. I want to be the best. I have no compromises. I will do my best. That's how they have moved on to become where they landed. So one is have passion for excellence in whatever you are doing. That's the only way you can move forward and see to that you will be in a position to succeed and achieve the goals you have outlined for yourself. And long, uh, one point which uh, during that course of discussion I was mentioning about leadership. Leadership is not something which is taught or which is, it evolves in situations. Sometimes in crisis, leadership evolves. Sometimes when opportunity comes, leadership evolves. Recently, you would have seen Gujarat Titans, Hartik Pandya. Nobody thought he will turn out to be one of the outstanding leaders and a captain of a team. But I must tell you, if you watch all the matches played by Gujarat Titans, they were really outstanding. He had a team, but he has ensured that he is able to motivate them and ensure that every match he takes it on that day, that is the job, and he succeeds. You know, he has been playing in uh, Mumbai uh, 11, Mumbai Indians, and uh, for the last many years, Nobody would have thought that he is such a classy player to be a captain. But he becomes, he gets an opportunity and he ensures that that opportunity is used effectively. So many other examples, whether it is uh, Rishabh Pant or somebody, particularly because cricket is a subject which is very closer to heart. The whole of India watches mainly cricket. One thing which moves the nation is cricket. As I told you, Britishers have taught many things including how to play cricket, how to win the matches, and the famous uh, Amir Khan movie is there on uh, cricket, <laughs> which came in 2003-04. And uh, all I would like to tell you is that leadership can evolve. You know, uh, some of uh, you must have heard about 9-11, which happened in US in 2003 when George Bush was the president, and the entire New York was up in flames 
almost 3,500 people died. And at that time, the mayor of New York, one Mr. Rudy Giuliani, he became the top of the town. The way in which he mobilized, whether it is emergency services, ambulances, hospitals, how to attend to so many people, answering the calls, everything he did. So there you become, you see a new leader emerging. I think uh, every day newspapers, you find hundreds of examples of new leadership emerging in different areas, not in one particular field, but in many areas. And uh, I also would like to share with you, don't think you can become the best leader overnight or people who look at you. A leadership is such that it takes time to develop. It, it is not that overnight you become a leader. Very few people are uh, given with that uh, uh, advantage that they are born with silver spoon and become leaders. But most of the people strive for it, work hard at it, and make themselves outstanding leaders. And uh, there are hundreds of examples I can give where leaders have emerged, and over a period of time, they made it the best. Like uh, uh, Ramdev Baba on yoga. The subject was unknown to India, or known but not practiced way back in 80s, late 80s. He started the channel. He started going to various places and passionately teaching yoga. Finally, ended up his becoming the leader, top level leader in yoga today. Almost everybody looks at the channel. I think uh, many of the homes which I visit and I talk to people in the morning, 6 to 8 o'clock, everybody is looking at what is the today going to happen. And he is able to take the message across the world. And I would like to tell you, if you are passionate about it, you can make anything happen. There is nothing, no dearth of uh, uh, ideas or activities which can happen. And uh, leadership also, when I am talking about it, uh, the styles are different. Somebody is autocratic, somebody is democratic, somebody is uh, authoritarian, somebody is authoritative. There is a difference between authoritarian and authoritative. Authoritarian is a, do what I say. Authoritative is able to tell with reasons why this has to be done, and people follow him. Okay, he's talking from experience. and So there are many types of leaders, and uh, don't be uh, trying to become a one stereotyped person as a leader, trying to take examples, look at different leadership roles, what uh, has been done, what each person has achieved, and based on that, you just ensure that you are in a position to take a leadership role. And you have to be a leader. Every day, somewhere or other, each one of us are doing a leadership job. It may be at home with respect to our family. It may be with respect to our children. Or if you are teaching in a school with respect to school, you are a leader. And so many, many examples are there every day in work, every walk of life. Suppose you are there, some accident has taken place, something has happened. Some leader will emerge in that situation. So I would like to tell you, don't think leadership is alien to anybody. It is something which is required for each one and every walk of life. And uh, I also would like to uh, share with you, when you are having, uh, looking at business management as this thing, I said, every walk of life, it is applicable in the real world, whether you are planning for your travel, whether you are planning for your education, or planning for your investments, everything calls for management. And what is most required is your ability to manage money. Unless and otherwise you are in a position to manage, money is the most vital resource. There are two resources in the world which are vital. One is funding on one side, another is people, human skills. Both these are available, you can go to commanding heights. You have seen what has happened in the US. The whole of Silicon Valley 
has succeeded because they have combined the Indian talent with the US funding power. If both are available, nothing can stop progress. So I would like to urge upon each one of you. Don't say mathematics is difficult. I don't understand what is the return on investment. I don't. Try to understand in your own small way. I put 100 rupees. Next year, I will get 105 rupees in fixed deposit. I will get somewhere else 110 rupees. With some risk, somewhere else I will get 120 rupees in a stock market. So look at what is your capacity to take risk. Capacity in terms of uh, earning with that risk. So based on that, you finalize what is your goals and what is your aspirations. And uh, each one of you, I would request you to have a mentor or a coach. See, somebody must be able to tell you, you are wrong here, you have to improve on this area because some known persons telling you will not help. But if you adopt somebody as your mentor, and if he tells something, because mentor is somebody whom you look up to. So if he's going to tell you something, then you will listen to you much more carefully, and I must correct it. Whether whatever my strengths and weaknesses, if he has analyzed and communicated to me, I must be able to correct it. So mentoring, you try to locate a mentor for yourself. OK, if you're not able to get a mentor, at least get a coach. Who can coach you? The, you must have seen the uh, all the games which are played, the world class level or even state level or college level, there is always a coach. What is his role? His role is to say that what is the right way of doing things. Whether you have got the right style, whether you can improve upon what you are doing. So my, uh, I urge each one of you, because you are in an institution and college, adopt your teachers as your mentors or coaches so that you can improve. By the time you get out of the institution from the program in which you are in, you must be in a position to say, yes, I have improved myself on these areas, whether it is time discipline, whether it is uh, uh, the uh, communication ability. Sometimes you are not able to communicate your thoughts. If some coach is able, this is how you have to tell. Practice yourself. You will be able to improve yourself on that area also. And lastly, I would like to tell you, uh, when many of you come out of the colleges, whether it is MBA program or whether it's engineering, uh, earlier our thought was, go and look for a job, OK? Job seekers. I think today's mantra is job givers. Try to be an entrepreneur. There are thousands of opportunities which are there if you are able to put your mind at it, if you are able to put your focus on it, efforts on it, you will succeed. You know, the whole of US, California uh, almost contributes nearly 60% of US uh, wealth. And how it has come up? It has come up mainly because of enormous strength of entrepreneurship. Anybody with an idea immediately will start working on it. You know what are all the products which came out. Steve Jobs came out with Apple. Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg came out with. And uh, Bill Gates came out with Microsoft. All these cases, when you look at it, there is plenty of opportunities. Only thing is, we need to be clear. Yes, I am willing to work on it. I will put my effort, and I will make it happen. So my uh, one humble submission to all of you is, as much as possible, each one of you see, instead of job seekers, you can be job givers. I think this is also one of the mantras of the Prime Minister who has been telling this, because there are not that many jobs. Even if you, for example, if you uh, build a huge communication infrastructure, it may cost few billion dollars. But number of jobs that come out is only about 20,000 jobs or 30,000 jobs, not more than that. You look at our manufacturing. The footprint has shrunk so much today, there is no manufacturing jobs, even though the output is going up. A lot of automation is taking place. A lot of uh, people are shrinking the footprint of how to manage, manufacture. Artificial intelligence is coming. So all these things are 
bringing down the footprint of manufacturing. So see to that, my request to all of you is try to spend some time to come out with ideas. Once you have a brilliant idea, which you can share with your mentor or with your coach, you will be able to develop and uh, develop a business on that. So my uh, request to all of you is don't always look for campus placements. Campus placement is one of the, if you're lucky, you're able to get it, fine, you use it. And many people who join the best of the organizations also leave after three, four years because there is always a disillusionment. Same repetitive job. So I don't want to do that. I want to do something different. I want to be my own boss. I don't want to be reporting to people. People have all types of uh, issues when it's a question of job. But if you're creating an organization or enterprise, you have got plenty that you can do. And uh, I, in life, for you to succeed, my mantra will be, first, you must have abundant amount of energy. If you don't have energy, you will find you also become also ran. For that, whatever is required, create energy in yourself. One is passion for excellence. Another is adequate nutrition you take and ensure that you are able to provide your best in terms of when you're doing uh, something on uh, work. Second is, you must be able to energize people around you. When you walk in a podium, when you walk anywhere, people must see, hey, is, is Admi ke paas itna energy hai? I must also uh, become energetic. You look at the examples of all our prime ministers, whether it is Indira Gandhi, whether it is uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh or Prime Minister Narendra Modi currently. Whenever in Vigyan Bhavan they were walking to, from the podium one end to the other, the briskness with which they were walking is admirable. They were all at different age groups. Probably Madam Gandhi was in her late 60s, Mr. Dr. Manmohan Singh was late 70s, Modi was in the early 70s, but one thing common, all of them are very brisk and able to convey energy and also create uh, that energetic feeling among others. You must be able to energize others. In a way, it's nothing but motivating others also. So that, hey, maybe kuch kar kar dikhana hai. That. Then, one important aspect which I would like to share with you is you must have edge in decision making. Many of us suffer because we have loaded with many options, but we don't take any decision. Which one to choose? How to choose? That's why I have earlier outlined to you problem analysis, objective, what you want to do, how to analyze, and then come to a conclusion. That speed of decision making and decision making is very, very vital. If you look at the current prime minister and the previous prime ministers, one important differentiator is the ability to take, take speedy decisions and also implement them with a lot of speed. So I, I'll give you one example which I came to know. That is Aadhaar. As a Aadhaar card, uh, Mr. Nandan Nilkani designed it and gave it to the nation. And it could have been made universal almost 10 years back. But it did not happen because there was always a problem whether to make national population register or Aadhaar as the universal base. There were warring factions in the process. No decision was made. But I understand that when Mr. Andan Nilkani went and made a presentation to the Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, in 2014, within minutes they decided, yes, the country will follow Aadhaar. And today, Aadhaar has become the universal symbol of identity. So that speed of decision making is very, very important. And I'm not uh, trying to criticize or say X or Y or Z. I'm only giving an example of how things have changed. Today, you go to the bank, Aadhaar is the base. You go to educational institution, Aadhaar is the thing. You go to anywhere else, what is the ID? Aadhaar. Okay. So that is uh, what I would like to uh, share with you, agent decision making.
so that you are in a position to move forward. And uh, uh, with that, I thought I will conclude. Uh, it is a pleasure. I shared snippets of various aspects because, as I said, thousands of books are available on business management, and there is no end to talking, starting from leadership, starting from vision, starting from execution, time management, and also communication. There is plenty of books available, plenty of things you are daily practicing. So my view was just to give some glimpses and flavor of various items, which I thought will be interesting to you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And I appreciate uh, the institution for giving me the opportunity. Dr. Sandeep uh, Mishra, the Vice Chancellor of the University, thank you, sir, for doing it. I greatly appreciate it. Anybody has got any questions, feel free to ask me.